Hola, I am Javier Romero and I welcome you to this video where we are going to see the second part of the section on recursion of the introduction of our tutorial on easy ANSYS programming. And here we are going to see some more realistic examples of the use, usage of recursion and in the end we are going to sum up what is easy ASP up to this moment. And so before we have seen some simple examples of recursion that perhaps were a bit artificial, so now let's see some other examples where recursion arises quite naturally. And for this we have here first this example on traveling, where suppose we are traveling by car and then we ask ourselves what places can we visit, right? So suppose we start at a point at a city A and there's a road from A to B, another road from B to C, another road from C to D, and this road goes back to A, right? And then we ask ourselves, what places can we visit? So in this simple example, I think we can already answer it ourselves, that if we are at A, then we can visit A, and then going to B, we visit B, then going to C, we visit C, and going to D, we visit C. Sorry, we visit D and then we could go back to A, but of course we have already visited A, so we know we can visit A, B, C and D. Right, so then how can we represent this in answer set programming? So first we have these facts to represent like the data of our problem, right? Where do we start and what roads are there? And then we have first this rule that tells us that for every X, if X if a start of x is in an answer set, then visit of x must be in the answer set also, right? And while I have read it in a way a bit artificial, going through all the symbols, but more in natural language, we would say that we, will, we visit a city if we start at that city, right? That's how we would read it. And then in the second rule, we can read it as follows, for every x and y, if road of x, y belongs to our answer set and visit of x also belongs to an answer set, then visit of y must also belong to the answer set. And a more natural reading would be that uh, we also visit a city if there is a road from another city to it and we have visited this another city already. Good. Then if you look at this rule, you will see that it is recursive, right? So we could say that this is a set of recursive rules that only has one rule. And the rule depends on itself because it has the same predicate in the head as in the body here. You see it. Then, and as I told you before, this is quite a natural representation to, the, to see what cities are we visiting. Right? It's not something artificial. This is what you would tell somebody. Look, you visit one city. If you can reach that city from other one and you have visited the first one, right? It's quite natural. Nice. Then let's see how to find the answer sets of this program. So initially we can apply the facts and we start with them. So we have them here. And then after applying this rule, we get this and here instead of putting the whole graph, so what set we obtain after applying its rule, given that this would get too big, I am only showing the sets that we are building at each step. And given that here we do not have any choice rule, at each step there will be a unique set, right? So then when we apply the rule that tells us that for every x, if we start a fact, if we have a start of x, then we must also have visit of x. Since we have a start of a, then we add visit of a. Now we go to apply the recursive rule. So we have road a, b, and we have visit of a. Then we can, uh, add, we have to add to our set this visit of b, right? But now, wait, we have applied the rule, but since it's recursive, we have to apply it repeatedly until nothing changes, right? So now things have changed because we have added visit of B in the first application. But now with this visit of B together with road BC, we have visit of B here and road BC, then we can uh, obtain visit of C, 
right? And this is what we add here. So we have obtained something new, this visit of C, then we have to apply it once more to see whether we have reached this limit. But now with visit of C and road CD, we obtain visit of D again, right? Road CD, visit C, then visit D. And now we apply it again. And now what happens is that after applying it once more, we cannot add anything else to the set. One could think, okay, now that I have row D, A, and visit D, then I get visit A. But visit A was already here, so then nothing changes. And then, so then we, have, we can stop applying the rule because if we apply it more times, nothing else will happen here. So then we can say that this is the set that results after applying this rule where we ha have added these three new atoms. And then at this point, what happens is that we have applied the rules in order where this rule that we can think of it as a set of recursive rules that only has one element, we have applied it repeatedly until nothing changes. So then we arrive at this set and then we know that this is the unique answer set of this problem. Nice, then just let's see quickly what happens here on the UPython notebook. In this cell, we have written our logic program traveling.lp. Then we run it to write it. And then we run Klingo and we obtain the expected answer set where we have first this start A and then this road atoms. And this correspond to the facts that we had. And then all these visit atoms here, right? And this is what we expected. And as always, we can comment the rules to see, to reveal in a way the graph that we have seen in the slides. So with this, we just get the facts about start and road. And then if we uncomment this one, we also get that we visit A. And then if we are back to the whole program, we get what we have already seen. Good, then let's move to another example. Here, we want to determine what numbers are odd and what numbers are even. And in this simple example, we just consider numbers from one to five. Then we say that next to one is number two, next to two is number three, next to three is number four, and next to four is number five. And then we start saying that number one is odd. And then we have these two rules that are recursive rules. The first one says that if M is odd, if a number M if is odd, then and the next of M is N, then N is even. And the second one says that if M is even, and the next of m is n, then n is odd. Then you can see that this is a set of recursive rules, and these are two rules with variables. The first one depends on the second one, because in the body it has predicate odd, and here this has predicate odd in the head. And similarly, the second depends on the first one, because it has even in the body, and this one has even in the head. And please um, uh, pay attention to the detail that here I'm checking the predicate, whether the predicate that occurs here in the body also occurs here in the head. It's not that we have to look at whether the atoms in the body occur in the head because this atom even of M does not occur here because here we have even of N. But actually we are not looking at the atoms. We just look at the predicates here. We see that the predicate even with one argument occurs here, and also this predicate even with one argument occurs here. Then we have that this rule depends on the first one, and the first one similarly, given that the predicate odd occurs in the body, and this occurs in this head, then the first rule depends on the second. And indirectly, indirectly then the first rule depends on itself. And similarly, the second rule indirectly depends on itself. So all the rules in the set depends on all the rules of the set. Right. Then what we can do now is see what are the answer sets of this program. Initially, we can apply the facts and then we get all of these atoms. 
And then once we apply this set of recursive rule, we have to treat it as a single rule and apply it repeatedly until nothing changes. So when we apply it for the first time, given that we have odd of one on next one, two, then here the M becomes one and the N becomes two. So we will get even of two, right? Number two is even. Then if we apply this set of rules as a single rule again, then with even of two and next two, three, we get odd of three, right? Even of two, the M is two, and then the N is three here, then we get odd of three. And similarly, now applying the rules again, now with the first one, we obtain even of four, right? We have odd of three and next three, four, then we get to even of four. And if we apply again, we can obtain another new atom, which is this odd five, because we have even of four, next four, five, odd of five, right? Here, even four, the M is four, the N is five, then we get odd of five. And then we apply it once more and we cannot obtain any new atom to be added to the set. So now, no matter how many times we want to apply these rules, the set will not change, right? So then we know that this is the result of applying these rules. And these are the atoms, the new atoms that we obtained that were not there before, right? So then what happens is that we have applied all the rules in order, considering that the recursive rules, considering the set of recursive rules as a single rule that we have to apply repeatedly until nothing else can be, nothing changes. And yes, then this is the answer set of this program. And uh, something that is quite obvious now from looking at the way we have built this set is that there is no or possible ordering from this rule because we are when we apply them together at some point it's the first rule that gives us something new but then it's the second one that gives us something new and then it's the first one and so on and so forth and also something that is important to note this is that these rules here are general so if we now want to define what are what even and odd numbers what are the even and odd numbers up to number 20? We just have to add more, add more facts about next. And in fact, we could do this simply with a single rule if we wanted. Nice, then just to conclude with this example, let's run it quickly with our Jupyter notebook. In this cell, we have the logic program. So we write it and then when we run it, we obtain what we expect, right? Here we have all the facts, and then we derive even of two, odd of three, even of four, and odd of five. And as before, as we have been doing before, if we comment this, we will just get the facts. And now, if we just had this rule, we would only get the new atom even of two, right? You have it here. But once we have all of them, what happens is that this is giving us odd of three and then we get even of four and then we get odd of five, as it should be. Nice. Then let's move on to a sum up of this section. Before we started this section, these were the ideas that we had about easy answer set programming. We said that the answer sets of an easy logic program are the result of applying its rules in order, one after the other. Then here we had what we meant by applying a rule, and here what we meant by applying it in order. And then there was the recommendation that we should write the rules in order. Now, in this section, we have extended this to logic programs with recursion. And the main idea is that sets of recursive rules are considered as a single rule that is applied repeatedly until nothing changes, right? So with respect to the application, we have seen that if the set of recursive rules cons consists of only choice rules or of only normal rules, then what we do is we apply it until we apply all of them at the same time until nothing changes. And we said that the 
case where we have combined recursion with choice rules and normal rules, we will explain this later. And then we will say also that for the sets of recursive rules that are considered as a single rule, we can apply them in order if for every predicate in any of the bodies of these recursive rules there are no rules with that predicate in the head left to be applied right and then of course we have uh, still the recommendation that we have to write the rules in order but of course for the rules that occur together in a set of recursive rules, there's no way to order them so these inside this set we can write them in any order so I think then this is what I wanted to tell you about logic programs with recursion and I hope you have enjoyed it and that we meet in the next video. Stay tuned. Ciao!